Becky Stedman will be sharing her story on this uh, special episode of the uh, Scott Stedman podcast as we continue uh, listening to women who have powerful stories. Hello and welcome to the Scott Stedman Podcast. I'm Scott, and today we are going to be uh, con- uh, our series of women who have uh, uh, powerful stories to tell. And my guest today is Becky Stedman. Uh, I know Stedman probably sounds familiar because this is uh, my mom, and she actually has a uh, blog out that she kind of writes about her uh, personal experiences, and she's going to share a little bit more about uh, those. So, uh, Becky, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Would you like me to call you Becky or would you like me to call you mom? Whichever you would like. Okay. <laughs> so, um, when did you, you have a blog called, um, titled Tragedy, Tears, and Trust, My Journey in Overcoming My Past and Discovering Who the, God, good, who the good Shepherd is to Me. Um, how did you uh, start uh, getting into blogging? Well, um, I had been thinking about doing it for a really long time and um i i um had been reading other people's like john is it akoff akoff or something like that i'd been reading some of their blogs and i just wanted to have a way that i could um tell people my story and maybe help those who you know had problems with you know knowing who you know the good shepherd was or god was um, I call him the Good Shepherd for certain reasons, which my blog explains. Um, you know, if they were having problems, that maybe they could benefit from some of my experiences. Okay, good, good, good. So um, obviously, uh, you started reading other people's blogs, and that's how you uh, got into uh, blogging. Um, let's see. Um, so, have you always enjoyed writing? Yes, yes, pretty much. I have. I, um, you know, I haven't really. You know, I used to write poems and stuff a lot, and um, I um, just, the title that I have, Tragedy, Tears, and Trust, I actually um, started writing when I was a junior in high school, and that was the title of whatever, you know, diary at the time or whatever I was writing in. I had titled it Tragedy, Tears, and Trust, and that title had just, you know, stuck with me because it was just like, it was something that I just was with me, and I just knew at some point I would use it for something. Oh, okay. Um, you know, the subtitle of your uh, blog is uh, My Journey in Overcoming My Past and Discovering Who the Good Shepherd Is to Me. Uh, would you want to share a little bit about uh, your past and what kind of, what are some things that you're trying to overcome from your past? Well, um, some of the things I'm trying to overcome from my past, I, I was raised in a, a very uh, strict um Christian background, I guess you would say. My father was a pastor, and, um, you know, always when the doors were open, you went to church, and, uh, um, but in the midst of all that, my um, father was also very abusive, Um, and um, so that sort of, uh, you know, growing up with that, um, you know, listening to the sermons from the pulpit and how God loves you and everything, but then having, you know, things happen at home that were not of God's love, um, just really confused me and, um, just made me think that, you know, God really didn't love me and that he hated me. And I, I grew up thinking that, you know, um, and I forgot what your question was. So (laughs) Uh, no, just, uh, no, no, just kind of talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just talk a little bit about your past, which you've kind of, so, um, you were obviously your uh, father was a minister and again, you made the uh, comment of, you know, when the doors were open, you know, when you're at church, it was like, he would say, you know, God is love would preach stuff. What he would preach 
on Sunday morning didn't necessarily translate into what happened when church was over after the... Yes, it, it did not, um, you know, there was no practicing what you preach, uh, mm-hmm. the old saying, practicing what you preach. Our home life was very private. You know, what was, I was told early as a child, what was said and done in the four walls of this house was to be kept in the four walls of this house. And, um, you know, on top of all this stuff going on, then you, you know, as when you're a pastor, it seems like at least when back, you know, when I was a girl back in the ancient of days, you know, um, it's like, um, you know, you put on your, your, your mask, you put on your, your Sunday school face, your church face, you know, you're the pastor's family, everything needs to be perfect. People don't need to know, you know, what's really going on. You need, and, and you have to have, at least my parents, you had to have this facade that it was a very religious facade, you know, but mm-hmm. I know all that now. I didn't know that when I was, a you know, growing up as a girl, it was just like, okay, it's something I do. Things, bad things happen at home, but I put on my smiley face and I go to church and I pretend. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, so obviously you're growing up in this, um, re- a religious household that doesn't practice what it preaches. Um, what was some, you mentioned that, you know, you're kind of confused, um, you know, hearing one thing, but to practice not being the other thing uh, what were some other things that kind of that eventually led down to um, as far as your own personal walk with God how did that uh, shape you and your walk with God well um, I didn't want to have a walk with God is basically how it shaped me I mean you know I I put up the facade for a very long time um, you know going to church and even after I was married even after you and your sister were born you know I went to church and you know played the piano and did all the good things that I was supposed to do until I finally just couldn't keep up the face anymore and I just basically it made me sick to even like actually physically sick to even enter the doors of a church because I just it it didn't matter if it was my dad that was preaching or if it was another preacher that was preaching I just didn't want to hear anything they had to say because to me it was just all lies and there was you know and to me yeah there might have been a God but it wasn't a loving and kind God and um, you know I was basically in my mind I was going to hell anyway so you know why mess with it yeah Um, the second part is is um, discovering who the good shepherd is to me and um, you talked earlier how like you were saying anytime we talked about God, you would say good shepherd God. And you say, well, I call him the good shepherd. Um, what was some of the, why do you call God, God, the good shepherd instead of like Lord or any other uh, name? What's so uh, prominent about good shepherd? Well, um, I came up with the name because, um, you know, as I started to, um, go downhill, I eventually, you know, um, ended up, finding you know going into therapy and finding a therapist that thank goodness was a a christian man and he also believe it or not was an ordained pastor and so at first it was very very scary for me to go to him Mm -hmm. um but um i had seen his wife for a few years before that and you know i trusted her so you know that's part of the tragedy tears and trust i need to learn to trust again and so we got to talking and every time he would say jesus or god or Lord, I just, I would just cringe and I would just burst into tears and I just could not, he was trying to, I couldn't, with those names, I could not see in my mind anybody that was loving, that cared about me, that, you know, died for my sins, that I I couldn't see, you know, I don't know if I'm saying this right, I could not see a man or, you know, anybody that really cared about me. So as we started talking, he said well let's try to come up with a name that you would be comfortable with and all I could think of was you know it says somewhere and you know obviously I you know that Jesus is a shepherd you know and that he cares for his sheep and by by talking about that and going over a few verses he went over a few verses with me um, I decided that I would be okay it when we talked about God or Jesus I would be okay if we use the term good shepherd that would help and slowly then that's what happened is I started to form in my head or in my mind a picture of a loving and a caring um, I guess you'd say God but you know a loving and a caring master that cared for me and that wept when bad things happened to me and and you know was there 
with me all the time through whatever I was going through. And that's mm-hmm. how I was able to start, you know, because any, any other name, I would picture a, a man in a big black robe with a big stick that just hit me over the head all the time and hurt me and abused me. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, you can't look at that and think, oh yeah, they're loving. And, you know, yeah. so. Okay, good. So um, you talked about um, going through therapy and trying to get um, help and trying to gain a trust. What were some other um, things that you were trying to rebuild trust in? Obviously, you said earlier about how you were going to church to the point where it kept making you sick, um, to the point where you just stopped going. When did you actually start to make the steps to kind of even go back to church? Well, um, actually, I didn't make the steps right away. My husband, actually, um, your dad, <laughs> um, he got very um, sickened by church also just because, um, you know, he was obviously married to me, and then he found out that what my dad had done and also that my dad was his pastor, and, um, you know, he didn't even want to have anything to do with church. But he still, you know... T- kept up his prayer life and stuff like that. I basically said, forget it. I don't want anything to do with it. But I guess in his prayer life, he decided that, you know, you kids needed to go to church and he needed to go as the head of the family. He needed to, um, go to church. And so he picked a church out to go to and started going. And then he came and asked me after a few Sundays, he said, he checked it out. He wanted to know if you could bring your kid, you know, bring you and your Mm -hmm. sister. And I'm like, no way because I didn't want you to get hurt because I just thought that's all that was going to happen was you and, you know, Danielle were going to get hurt. And finally he did ask me, do you trust me? There's the trust again. Do you trust mm-hmm. me? And it's like, yes, I did trust my husband, but I didn't trust church people. But I trusted your dad enough to say, okay, you can take the kids and go. And then eventually um, I got brave enough that, you know, I decided that, you know, I would go meet one of the pastors of the church, the the associate pastor at the time and his wife. I would, my husband had become friends with them and I would go meet them just in their home. And eventually I did think that, you know, maybe, maybe, um, maybe it'd be okay to try and, and go back and, and, you know, just see what, what this church is like. Maybe it's not like the one I went to, you know before okay um so obviously were were there any roadblocks when you started to go back to church to where you are now were there some roadblocks along the way due to the past that you had to overcome oh yeah there (laughs) there were several roadblocks there was like a roadblock of even being able to step into the church i just i um i didn't want to be in the sanctuary i didn't want to you know have to sit in the pew you know just all the old memories or tapes will come back you know of of, you know um not only abuse but the facade of being a religious you know family of getting up there and you know playing the piano and and you know worshiping and singing and all that stuff you know and you know putting on a big fake smile and um so and then um the preaching you know, listening to the preacher preach. And I just, for a long time, I just blocked it out. And I sat there for several Sundays. I would sit there and just clench my fist and just shake in my seat, physically shake in my seat and cry. But I kept coming back because it seemed like the pastor that was pastoring at the time and the people I had met, the associate pastor and his wife seemed to have something in their eyes that I had not seen in the church I had grown up and it was like a a tenderness and a love and a care, a a caring. And I kept thinking, okay, well, they've got something. And, you know, my therapist also had that in his eyes. And it was like, I I want what they have. But in order to get it, I, I needed to just come. And if I just sat there and shook and cried the whole service, I just sat there, you know, and shook and cried. And, um, you know, the scripture reading, in fact, you bring that up. I'm actually working on a piece for my blog now that's called, um, twisted scripture, twisted words, twisted scripture. And it's about how the scriptures were twisted for me growing up, which made me just think the Bible said horrible things and not really what it did say. And so that's, you know, that's, a lot of the roadblocks then that, you know, I'm still going through with the scriptures. I'm still working on that, but it has gotten a lot better. Good. 
Um, so um, obviously there's a transition from going to church when you're younger to where you are at now. Um, you talked a lot about therapy. You talked a lot about, you know, um, uh, being friends with the associate pastor and the associate pastor's wife and just meeting kind of nice people. And that kind of was, in a way, baby steps to getting you to where you are now. Were there any other resources or um, books or anything that kind of helped you along in your journey? Um, yeah, I um, I remember when I first started therapy that I was um, asked to read the book, um, The Dangers of Growing Up in a Christian Home. I'm not exactly sure who it's by. I do have it at home um, still <laughs> after all these years. Um, and um, um, I'm trying to remember some other books that, I mean, there wasn't really, um, there was a few books, but I can't really remember a whole lot of books right now I know they're on my shelf in my home but I can't remember what they are titled right now but there was a few books that yes I did read but you know mostly it was just um just going you know every week for 18 years 18 years of therapy every week going even when I didn't feel like it just going and sitting for two hours and and talking and and of course reliving memories and stuff but then working through them and healing from them and um getting a picture of the good shepherd you know helping me do that and helping me heal from you know heal all the pieces of me that were just broken Mm -hmm. yeah and you 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 make a pretty uh, good point here you know the you know you kept going even kept going to therapy you kept going to church even if you didn't feel like it even if it meant going to church and sitting there and just shaking and crying just because you just felt so uncomfortable but eventually because of the experiences with your therapist where you you meant you said something about you know there was something in their eyes like a love in their eyes from them from the people you saw at the new church you're going to how that really in a way transformed you to the person you are uh, today um so uh yeah you do talk about your um blog and actually i'll go ahead and give the uh, web address for your blog uh it is a uh, good shepherd for you too dot blogspot dot com again that's good shepherd for you too uh with the letter u not spelled out dot blogspot dot com and the title is tragedy tears and trust of uh, my journey in overcoming my past and discovering who the good shepherd is uh, to me um, and I, I wanted to interject oh, okay. the for you too. make sure they know that it's a number four and then the letter U and then a number two okay yes and um, in case if you still haven't gotten it down or you still can't remember it together I will have it on the uh, I will have a link to it on my uh, website the Scott dot com on my notes for the show for this show and then you can go ahead and um, interact with the blog. Um, since you first started your blog, which looks like you started it sometime last year, um, what has been the response for people who have read your blog? Um, so far, I've had a good response. I haven't had any negative comments, but you know, that will maybe happen. I don't know. But I mean, I've had um, some people have sent me private messages on Facebook because I do put a link up on it on my Facebook page and on Twitter. And, um, um, you know, saying that, you know, um, whatever they read that day really helped break, you know, a shell that they were in and, and, um, helped so far, all the responses have been basically that it has helped them in some way or another. And that was exactly what I was wanting to do because I just want, wanted people to know who the good shepherd really is i mean who he really is that he really is a loving and a kind um i'll say person but you know he's not someone that is you know hanging over you beating you up every time you make a mistake or wanting to hurt you um and i just um know there are people out there that don't think think like maybe not as bad as I used to but don't think that God loves them or you know God the good shepherd loves them cares for them and um I um I just you know it's helped some people 
from yeah. what they've told me. Uh, many people don't probably don't say anything, but mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so just as we start getting to a close of our interview, um, is there anything you'd like to say to someone who is listening who may have had some type of similar experience with you, uh, like you, or have had some type of bad experience uh, dealing with either Christians or with the church? Is there anything you'd like to uh, say to those people who are listening? Well, first of all, I just want to say that I am really sorry if the church has hurt you in some way and you know, soured you against anything. Um, I, I would just try to seek out if you can, um, uh, you know, s someone that can like, I guess a Christian therapist. And I know that I say that loosely because there are a lot of Christian therapists out there that say they're Christian, but you know, they're, they're there for, you know, it's, it's hard. Um, you can always, um, um, you know, contact, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, um, I'm not sure what to say. I, I, I know that it, I was lucky because I did the good shepherd placed in my path, people that would help me. But I also know of several people who have gone to therapy and who have been told horrible things by a so-called Christian therapist. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I just, just try to find, you know, try to find some resources that would, that, you know, you can be mm -hmm. comfortable with that you, you know, can see in, in people that they are really genuine about what they really believe. Yeah. And I think, you know, and I think that's, you know, the main message that you kind of thing, just to kind of sum up everything, just, you know, you know, don't give up. You know, if you go to a Christian church and you were hurt, you know, don't just try to write it off as, oh, well, all churches are bad, you know. Sure, there may be some time where you might have to walk away and you might have to, wound, you know, might have to mend your wounds a little bit and then go see, go to therapy. And especially, you know, and I understand, you know, me being a Christian therapist, too, you know, there are some who are very kind, who are very good. And then there's some who just it seems like they're just trying to be there for that hour and then they send you away or I even know a friend who went to a Christian uh, therapist and was kind of saying some things and ended up breaking confidentiality and ended up telling uh, another person at the church they're attending to and actually caused the bigger problem so you know and that I think that's just a part of human nature but you know don't give up just keep trying and especially if you feel God's or the Good Shepherd, or whatever name you like to use that you feel comfortable with, whoever's listening, you know, just continue to persevere and push forward, because especially if you read the Bible, and we know that God is love, and you surround yourself with loving people who are there to support you and love you, um, even with all your flaws, then that's where true healing can begin. Um, so, yeah. Yes, I, I, I do agree with that. I, I want to just... Um, just a couple of things if we have time just you know to let you know um the first therapist i went to was not all that great and did do some damage to me but i just kept searching and kept trying and also the church that i am attending now the one that i did sit in the pews and shake the church people were so loving even though they didn't understand what was going on with me all i was with this girl over here or this lady over here shaking and crying but they just prayed for me even though they didn't know what was going on and they just loved me like like you said scott with all my flaws and everything and so you know basically that's there is hope and don't give up all right good all right well again uh thank you for listening to uh the scott Simon podcast um Again, I'll have all those resources that uh, Becky mentioned. Um, I'll have a link to her blog, and I'll also have a link to the book, The Dangers of Growing Up in a Christian Home, and I'll have that posted up there too. So in case if anybody who is having a similar experience as Rebecca or Becky, I do apologize, um, you know, you can go online and uh, say this. this is probably the first time I've ever called you by your real name instead of mom, so it's kind of a weird experience for me as well for me too <laughs> all right well again thank you for listening i hope you all have a good day and uh, continue to listen as i uh bring up another uh, podcast up for your uh, listening pleasure have a good day bye you make